Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14. I hear uh, Isaiah and King Ahaz has had a conversation. And uh, this is the sign that God sent King Ahaz uh, because he was going through something. And it says this right here. It says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he will call him Emmanuel. Let's go to two chapters further. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. And it says, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of all the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as the people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in the blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for your fire. Mm -hmm. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will rest on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And he will be called Wonderful mm -hmm. Counselor, mm -hmm. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne in the, over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Family, in our time together today, I want to throw a title at this specific text, and I want to come from the subject of ready or not, here I come. All right. All right. Ready or not, Amen. here I come. Family, as you guys know and as you guys have seen as we've gone from Sunday through Sunday, from Sunday to Sunday in December, we have been doing something called Advent. Right, And this season is a season where we celebrate the coming of Jesus. Yes. Right? So Advent is rooted from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. Right? Okay. And we celebrate in the month of December the coming of Jesus. Right? But in Easter, we, on the Easter time, or the Easter time, we celebrate the resurrection. So we call that Resurrection Sunday. So in other words, the Advent season is we celebrating Jesus coming down. The, re uh, the resurrection time, uh, season, we celebrate Jesus going up. All right. Right? So we are in this season where we're not celebrating Christmas, the title, but we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so, so this is not a title event. This is a birth event. Right? So if you guys know the title, Ready or Not, Here I Come, we know that title from a specific game that we used to play. Uh, as kids call hide and go seek. All right. And there were certain games that kids used to play. I'm not talking about the video games, but we used to go outside, meet up at the green box, and then we used to count to like uh, do a little song on who's gonna be it, and the person who was gonna be it had to turn around, count to a specific number, and go search for the individuals that was hiding. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in this game, there was two positions. All right. You had the hider and you had the seeker. Pretty self-explanatory, but just to go into more detail, the hider, when they found that they were not the ones who were going to be it, they decided to go hide, and their goal or their objective was to stay hidden and be overlooked by the one that was seeking so that they can make it back to base safely. Mm -hmm. But the seeker, on the other hand, he had to turn around, count to a specific number, and then everybody who was hiding anticipated the slogan of ready or not, here I, here I come. come. All right. Right. So when this individual decides to go out and seek these guys, listen to me. Seeking is not looking. All right. Say that. Right. Seeking is searching until I find you. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because I can look for something and then I, I, I obviously get tired of it. Like if I'm looking for my wallet and I had to go to the store and I'm just like, man, I ain't, I'll find it later. That's just looking. But me seeking it is looking over everything, removing the clothes, picking up stuff just to try to find where my wallet is. All right. But as I was studying this and the Holy Spirit gave me to relate this as an example, I wonder, I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, God, what is it that you are trying to get out of this? Because I don't understand how a game can go with Jesus. Hmm. Right. And he told me, relate that to Jesus. And I started to think about it and meditate on it. And I said, Wow. The Holy Spirit told me that we are the hiders. And Jesus is the seeker. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all may have missed what I just said. All right. We are the ones who always hide. Uh -huh. Hide in our addiction. Mm -hmm. Hide in our sin. Hide in our own desires. Hide in our pride. Hide in our lust. Hide in our temptation. But the great thing about Jesus, remember, a seeker just don't look. He does whatever it takes to find the individual right where they are. Uh-huh. Yes. Catch this. So Jesus does whatever he needs to to find you. Mm -hmm. So even if you're hiding in your addiction, he'll meet you there. Yes. And he'll bring you back to base. Everybody say safely. Safely. So God locates you where you are currently. Yes. And watch this. He saves you. We will read later in scripture today that the word Jesus means the Lord. Everybody say saves. Uh -huh. So it says, so he will locate you and he will save you where you are. And AJ, what do you mean by the Lord saves? In other words, he would take risk and sacrifices to make sure that you are okay. Uh -huh. So when Jesus came down to earth, that is exactly what he did. Remember, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's under so much pressure to drink the wrath of, uh, to drink God's wrath of the sins that you and I have committed. So he sacrificed himself for me and you. Well, the Lord saves. Mm. Right? But in our message or in our scripture today, we have read about King Ahaz, right? And King Ahaz, the Bible says, is a wicked king. Mm. He is a wicked king. Dude does nothing but wrong. And now he's in a situation mm. where he's about to get attacked. And I, I challenge you guys to go and study this. But he's about to get challenged by two guys, right? And he's worrying. But it's crazy because God sends a messenger to relay the message that everything is going to be all right. Well. Now, AJ, and, I, and I'm curious because, but AJ, he's a wicked king. Hmm. And AJ, he's sinful. But God is telling him that everything is going to be all right. Well. AJ, he's a wicked king. Say that. Say that. Say AJ, that. AJ, he's sinful. Uh-huh. But God said that everything is going to be all right. We're going to get to that in a minute. Say it. We're going to get to that in a minute. But God sends a messenger to relay that everything is going to be all right. And he had a conversation with Isaiah. And Isaiah is telling him to ask God for a sign. Uh -huh. Isaiah is telling him to ask God for a sign. And he goes on to say, no, I don't want to test God. But you wicked and you were sinful. You always test God. Uh -huh. All right. But who does that relate to? Hmm. Everybody say me. Me, me absolutely. Me. Yes. Me. And guess what the Lord still did? Mm -hmm. Say it. Mm -hmm. But Ahaz tells him, no, you know, like I'm not going to ask for a God for a sign. And so God takes out of his own, he, t he steps out of his own way. He says, all right, well, I'm going to give you a sign myself. And Isaiah speaks this prophecy, which is a foretold message of the virgin will be born, will born a son, and his name will be Emmanuel, mm. which means God is with us. Mm. So the question I want to propose to God's people today is, are you ready for what's coming? Well, all right. I mean, because the purpose of this message is to get people ready for the thing that God is about to send your way. Yeah. God is about to send you a job. Are you ready? All right. God is about to send you a man. Are you ready? Uh -huh. I need you guys to understand that once you, you need to get ready and stop trying to hide in the space that's covering you from God and allow him to bless you with the thing that he's going to prepare you for. All right. Whoever heard the saying, stay ready so you don't got to get ready. Mm -hmm. All right. I know I am. Now, I used to box, and if you guys know me, I wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> now, I used to box, y'all. And one day I went to practice, and on Thursday it was our practices for sparring. 
Right? And if you know anything about sparring, you know that once you spar, you have to go in and you have to literally fight other folks. Right? And I'm a lover. Not a fighter. Not a fighter. <laughs> but I got to practice, and it's crazy because when I walked in, I got on from school, and then I walked into the gym, and then all I see is my coach there. Now, my coach is like 60, right? At the time, I'm like 16. So I should be, I should be lacing him, right? But it's vice versa. And it's crazy because when I got into the gym, ain't nobody else was in the gym but me and coach. And I'm like, well, he must have canceled practice. And I asked the coach, I said, hey, coach, like, where's everybody at? And he goes on to say, they ain't coming, but get in the ring so we can start sparring. <laughs> I'm like, man, I can take this, man, he's 60, right? <laughs> So we get to we get to the ring, and our, our practice is for two hours. On sparring days, we spar for the entire practice. I'm like, man, I'm I'm wore this man now. He's gonna try to put me on the baggage room. I kid you not, they felt like we spar over 25 rounds. <laughs> and like on round two, I was tired. <laughs> right? So Grady, my hand started to drop. My punches started to get weaker. And it was about the 12th round, my coach just seemed like he was getting stronger and stronger. <laughs> and he comes at me and I'm trying to back up to try to, like, coach, come on, man. I ain't gonna get a water break. But he comes at me and he's coming at me fast and strong. And then he swings back and throws a hook. I swear I seen a sludge hammer. <laughs> he, he, threw, he threw that hook and I'm just looking at slow motion. I could have done, but it's just like, I, I, didn't have to, I, I don't know. But he hit me, and I swear I seen Jesus. Because I fell to the canvas. And I hit that ring, and something shook in me, and I got back up like ain't nothing happened. He said a couple words to me that really stood out, that not only changed my perspective on boxing, but also in life. He told me, AJ, you got to stay ready, so you don't got to get ready. And family, I realize that we can relate that back to our lives today because John 3.16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave. Mm. But if you're not ready for the thing that he's trying to give you, how will you flourish? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave. The greatest gift that man has ever received was that of Jesus. To come and save us from our sins. Like I said, in the Garden of Gethsemane, that literally, Gethsemane is translated for the word pressure. Mm -hmm. That's what the word Gethsemane means. But Jesus goes here when he's about to get turned over to the Roman officers to be tried for something that he ain't even do. All right. So he's in this Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying, God, let your will be done. But uh, uh, I don't want to do this. Right? But the Roman guards still come and get him. And he, his perfectness saved our imperfectness. Mm -hmm. So this season, we come to celebrate his coming. All right. Because that is the greatest gift that man has ever received. Mm. You thought that Louis bag was your greatest gift. Mm -hmm. Don't look at me funny like y'all ain't think that. Mm -hmm. You thought that car was your greatest gift. You thought that purse was your greatest gift, but I'm here to bring some public service news that Jesus was the greatest gift. All right. And family, I want to talk to you guys today about Jesus' birth, all right? So we're going to look at the book of Matthew, verses 1 through, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Um, and if you can turn there, you can uh, just follow along with me as I go. But it says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Then Joseph, her husband, being just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought of these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which I is conceived in her of the Holy Ghost. And she will bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. For he shall save his people from their sins. 
Now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken on of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with his child and shall bring forth the son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord, Joseph being raised from sleep, did as the Lord um, had bidden him and took unto his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called him Jesus. Yes. Family, I want to talk to you guys about the first two verses really quick. And the first point that I want to make to this is God performs mm -hmm. unexpected miracles. Mm -hmm. God performs unexpected miracles. Mm. Ask Moses when Moses got to a dead end, mm. trying to free the Israelites from the land of Egypt. Mm. He was literally making an exodus out of Egypt with God's people. He runs up into a mountain, runs up into a Red Sea, and runs up into the army behind him. And at this point, his back is against the wall. And he has no clue on which way to turn because there's nowhere else to go. Because in his eyesight, he sees disaster. But the Bible tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. Exactly. So if we're walking by faith, we can trust God that he will see us to the other side. Mm -hmm. And God performed the unexpected miracle because he split the Red Sea and let him pass right through the storm. Why? Because God performs unexpected miracles. Ask the disciples when, in the book of Matthew when the disciples came to Jesus and they were in a remote place and it was getting late and the disciples said, we got this big multitude of people following me and I just don't understand how we're going to feed these guys. Jesus, you need to go and send these guys home because we don't have enough food to even feed them or ourselves. Mm -hmm. And Jesus asked them a question of what is it that you have? And they said, we only have two fish and five loaves. And Jesus watched this. He says, bring them to me. Uh -huh. And he watched this, gave thanks. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he already thanked God for what he was about to get blessed with. Yeah, yeah. So he gave thanks and blessed it and fed 5,000. Uh -huh. And it's crazy because the exactly next chapter, he fed 4,000. And the disciples did the same thing as if they didn't see Jesus mm -hmm. already do the same thing a chapter before. Uh-huh. Right. Because why? He performs unexpected. Everybody say miracles. Yeah. Ask David when David is literally Uber eating his brothers some food from Jesse to go feed them because they are standing in between a valley and somebody named Goliath. Uh -huh. And David, as he gets there, a boy, he looks up and sees a giant cursing God. Mm -hmm. And he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine mm -hmm. that's trying my God? Yes, yes. And David went into the valley as a boy to fight a warrior, the uh -huh. Bible says, yes. and slayed the giant. Mm -hmm. yes. Why? Because God performs unexpected, unexpected miracles. miracles. Yes. You would expect, though, for God to pick a well-mature, a well-equipped, a well-suited, watch this, a well-experienced, individual that's highly skilled at the thing that he's about to do to do the thing that he wants you to do. Mm -hmm. But he picked Mary mm -hmm. who had no motherhood experience well. to raise a king, a god. Mm -hmm. Don't miss this. Mm -hmm. He picked AJ, somebody who struggles with public speaking, mm -hmm. to preach the word. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. He picked you to do the thing that you needed to do, even in the midst of your insecurity. Why? Because you were meant to do it. Uh -huh. So it doesn't take you to be well experienced. It doesn't take you to be well suited. It just takes you to, everybody say, trust God. Trust God. Amen. Why? Because Jeremiah 1 and 5 tells us like this. I knew you before you was in your mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Before you were born, I set you apart. Mm -hmm. I think we misunderstand that scripture sometimes. Because it says he knew us before we was in our mother's womb and he set us apart. So when we get ready to do the thing that God has already told us to do and our insecurities get in the way and try to shut you down and push you back, 
You can say I'm already set apart for this. Uh -huh. Because God already called me before I was even here on this yes, earth. Yes. So I'm set apart to do the thing that God had already told me that I'm supposed to do. Uh -huh. So insecurity, you got to roll. Uh -huh. Doubt, you got to roll. Failure, you got to roll. Yes. Because you cannot come in between my calling and God. Uh -huh. yes. I need you to understand, family, public service announcement, breaking news, news flash. You may be broken. You may be bruised. You may be compressed, but if you're called, you are called because you are set fit by God. And if you are soft fit, can't nothing stop you. Uh huh. All right. All right. Because Romans eight tells us like this: If God be for you, who? Inadequacies, who? Self-esteem, low self-esteem, who? Watch this. Haters, who? Who, yes. who can be against you? Mm -hmm. But in this scripture, guys, we see that Joseph is trying to find an escape plan. Right? It says that he's trying to divorce her uh, privately um, and not publicly for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to list some of those reasons. But it's crazy that he's trying to find an escape plan. When he finds out that his wife is impregnant, right? But at this time, he didn't know that she was impregnant by the Holy Spirit. Well. Right? So he decides to find an escape plan. You know when you always, have you guys ever been in a position where you knew that something was like off and so you were like, hey, I'm going to just try to find a nice way out? Like in other words, you've been on the phone with somebody and you don't want to talk to him no more, so you just lie and say, hey, uh, I got to go. <laughs> when knowing that you ain't going nowhere but to your bed <laughs> to sit down and watch the TV. Not because you were trying to be mean, but you were just trying to find the nice way out of that conversation. I see that Joseph did the same. Mm. You know, and my question, guys, to you is what was given to you, but you didn't birth it because of fear, insecurities, inadequacies, low self-esteem, or self-judgment? All right. What was deposited into you by God is meant to be withdrawn by you. Mm. So I'm going to say that again because that just flew over something. All right. What was deposited in you by God is meant to be withdrawn by you. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if something is given to you, a gift, you should not take it to the grave. You should show it to the world and expose it so they can bring God, God glory. All right. The, under, the undercover talent that God gave you, withdraw it. Some of you have a gift of ministry, but you are afraid to withdraw it because of self-doubt. Mm -hmm. Some of you have a gift of singing, but you are afraid to showcase it because of insecurity. Mm -hmm. Some of you have are supposed to be serving in the church, but don't do it because you're scared. Nothing is, watch this, nothing is meant to stay pregnant forever. All right. Mm -hmm. I didn't stay in my mama's belly till I died. Mm -hmm. Because my mama conceived me, and nine months later, I was exposed to the world. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that God has given you that's meant to be taken to the grave. Well. Mm -hmm. Your talent needs to be birthed, mm -hmm. Right. I remember watching this, uh, a motivational video uh, while I was at Chick Fil A, and I used to train the leadership. And then our, at our, at our, in our leadership class, I would show them a video of Denzel Washington. All right? Denzel Washington is talking to this college, and as he's talking to this college, he says something. He says the graveyard is the richest place. Mm -hmm. And for a moment there, I had to meditate on what he meant because that really makes sense if you think about it. And then he goes on to say the reason why the graveyard is the richest place, Janae, is because so many unbirthed talents has went to the grave with it. Mm -hmm. And my question to you guys, family, is your unbirthed talent going to go to the grave with you? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to let the world see it to bring God glory? Mm -hmm. But like I said, family, there's many reasons why Joseph was going through the divorce quietly. One, because of the uncleanliness of uh, how it would have made people think that Mary is unclean. All right? The law states that if you commit adultery, you are considered unclean. Well. All right? 
And so Joseph, he had this thought in his mind. And also the law mentioned that if you commit adultery, you'll get stoned. Mm -hmm. But out of love, oh my goodness, out of love, he said, okay, instead of just public, publicly exposing you, I'm going to just divorce you quietly so nobody knows. So for one, you won't look unclean. And for two, you won't get stoned. Three, I feel that it's because he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Until he got confirmation by the angel God sent to him. Mm. Don't base your life off of what if it doesn't work. Mm. If, you don't, if you don't see yourself fit, but God intended it for you, it's because he saw you as fit. Well, Let's look at verses 20 and 20 through 21. But verse 20 and 21 says, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her spirit in her is from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So, family, I want to talk to you guys uh, or throw a point on this. And Jesus, which is Jesus was naturally born to man, but supernaturally conceived by the power of the almighty God. Mm -hmm. So Isaiah, in our scripture that we read at the beginning, has a prophecy. And his prophecy says, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. Mm -hmm. So in other words, that's telling us, guys, that Mary will birth the human. But God gave a God. And God gave his son to be humanized on the earth so that he can actually experience what it is that we struggle with and for us to die for us so that we can be saved by him on the cross. Right? So the Holy Spirit provides comfort in the discomfort. So he came to Joseph when Joseph had several things going on in his mind about why, why this is going on. You know, Mary, he finds out that Mary's having a baby, but it wasn't from Joseph. So that automatically thought that, you know, hey, she's out here with somebody else. She didn't want me. So, but the Holy Spirit, what he did was he came to Joseph in a dream. I'm sorry, an angel came to Joseph in a dream and gave him comfort in his discomfort. Mm -hmm. So Joseph's role, I feel family, that we study in the church Mary and we study the birth of Jesus. And both are significant, trust me. But I do believe that Joseph also had a very significant role. Yes. Right? And many times it's overlooked, and indeed I even overlooked it before. But family, I, I realized this as I read this scripture 334 times. <laughs> it says, it says that Mary gave birth, but then the angel came to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Mary gave birth, but the angel came to Joseph. All right. So that tells me that Mary was given priority to birth Jesus. Joseph was given responsibility to prepare Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because in the next few chapters, you see that the angel came to Joseph to, on, what they, on what he needs to do for his family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this isn't a Mother Day or Father's Day uh, uh, message, but I need us to understand this. Joseph played a significant role. Mm -hmm. Remember, Solomon says in Proverbs 22, train up a child as it should go. Mm -hmm. And when he gets old, he won't depart from it. So Jesus, if you look at Jesus and Joseph's occupation, Joseph was a carpenter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus was also a carpenter. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had to learn that from Joseph. Uh-huh. Huh? So if Jesus learned that from Joseph, Joseph had taught him how to fix things. Mm. Jesus learned how to fix lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we just missed what I just said. Yeah. So he took his occupation and applied it to our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Watch this. Because the scripture also said that Joseph was just a man. The Hebrew for the word just is yashar, which means upright, right, or righteousness. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that not only Jesus was that, but his father was as well. Mm -hmm. So although Jesus was born righteous, he had to see the action of his father doing that, and he mocked the image. Mm -hmm. So his characteristics mocked Joseph. 
Because God has intentional plans with everything he does and everyone he chooses. You know, and Joseph is usually uh, looked over and passed by, but he's significant. Yes. He is very significant. You know, and I came to disrupt your schedules today and burst your bubbles and shake your mind to tell you that God used divine selection to choose and uh, to choose you to raise that kid mm -hmm. or to choose you to raise that gift. Well, because your characteristics show yourself approved. Mm. Don't give up when it gets hard. Don't think that you aren't doing right. When it's not looking good, don't look down. Instead, look up to the king and say, God, if you trusted me, I won't let you down. Well, and I will train up this thing as it should go. And when he would get old, he will not depart from it. So even when he gets weary, I can trust in your word. Because your word also tells me that you do not lie. That this will come to pass and my child will be back whole. So fam, now I want us to look at verses 22 through 25. In verses 22 and 25, it's through 25, it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. Yes. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God's with us. Mm -hmm. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Mm -hmm. But he did not uh, consummate her, uh, their marriage until she, was, until she gave birth to a son and gave him the name Jesus. Mm -hmm. The point I want to throw on this is, family, we have to learn how to listen and act. Mm -hmm. All right? Because in the beginning of our verses or the beginning of our scripture that we read this morning, Joseph was trying to leave. But the, but the angel came down and talked to Joseph. And it says, when Joseph woke up, immediately he took action. Mm -hmm. So that tells me he had to listen. And listening is doing way more than just hearing. Mm -hmm. Right? So he had to listen and act on it immediately. And I have a question for you guys today that I want to propose is, how would you respond to some crazy instructions? Well. How would you respond, Noah, if God comes to you before you ever even seen some rain to build art? Mm -hmm. How would you respond, Daniel, to go into a lion's den and uh, trust God that he'll see you through? How would you respond, Abraham, to leave a country that you have grew up in to go to another thing, to start something, and then to get promised a son several years before he actually gave birth at an old age? How would you respond? There was a time where I was working at Wells Fargo. All right? And this, in this place or this location was not the place that I should have been. Because I had a choice to choose between where well, I go in the police department. All right? You know, and I told, God literally told me to go to the police department. You know, I had a conversation with granddad. I had a conversation with everybody. And I was so scared to go to the police department that I decided to go to Wells Fargo. And as I was in Wells Fargo, it's crazy because at Wells Fargo, it was the worst job that I ever had. Time after time after time again, it was nothing but disruption and chaos in Wells Fargo. Mm. And God, and I pray, God, hey, I, I just need some help. Like, I need somewhere to, to work that's going to be better than this. Amen. And God tells me, he says, leave Wells Fargo. Amen. But God, I'm like, I don't have a job, so how can I just leave? Are you going to bless me with something before? Mm. And he ain't say nothing. Because he already told me what it is that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. But I decided to take action in my own hands and stay. And it led to a position of worship. And then I ended up leaving and stuff got better because I trusted his crazy instructions. All right. Mm -hmm. Remember, when God gives you some crazy instructions, our gift was that of Emmanuel, which means that God is with us. Mm -hmm. So when you act on that crazy instruction, remember that God is with you. Yeah. So you are not in it by yourself. And if God is for you, who can who be can against you? So family, there's two lessons that, I, that I've learned uh, from, this, from this message today. Or two lessons that I learned from the birth of Jesus. And after that, I'm going to be finished. All right? The first thing uh, is generosity. All right? Generosity. 
You notice on Christmas that we come together and we give out gifts. That's out of generosity. Because God gave to us, so we want to try to mock that by giving other stuff. Well. Right? So on Christmas, we give out gifts out of generosity. And family, I realize that you can't be God's giver. You know, and I love how the writer says, for unto us a child is born and a son is given. You know, so our gift was in God's giving. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Jesus was naturally born to man, but supernaturally conceived by the power of the almighty God. So God loved each and everyone so much that he decided to give the thing that he loved the most. For you and I. So I understand that God had a generous heart and family, we should too. And when I talk about generosity, I'm just not talking about money. You know, I'm talking about your time, your testimony, well, your talents, hmm. your gift, words of encouragement, your help. Because you never know what your giving can do in somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Bible says you reap what you sow. I think sometimes, family, that we get it mixed up and think that it says we reap where we sow. Mm. Make that make sense, AJ. In other words, if I reap, uh, uh, if I reap some money, I'm going to get that money back, right? But if I gave money to Granny because she needed it, that don't mean that I'm going to get money back from Granny. I don't reap where I sow. I reap what I sow. Well. And family, we have to understand that when it comes down to this gift of generosity or giving in period, that we have to give out of a cheerful heart, and if we trust God, we will reap what we sow. Amen. The, second chance, the second thing, family, what I learned is that Jesus gives us a second chance. Hmm. Jesus is the second chance. Right? Everybody say grace. 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 Come on, say grace. 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 So Jesus' birth isn't the same as a, uh, as a resurrection. You know, but it is affirmation that the resurrection is coming. Because without the birth, there will never be a resurrection. All right. So we have to celebrate this because it is it is what we we need to do. That's simple, right? So Jesus' birth is real is very significant because without that, there will be no resurrection. So through Jesus, we receive a second chance at this thing every day, because we are all sinners saved by grace. Yes. Right. But can I give you another? We are all sinners saved by Jesus. Mm -hmm. right. right? So even though you do wrong, Jesus is your second chance. There was, I, was at, I was at this conference, guys, and, uh, and, at, and as I was there, we got to a point of prayer. And this pastor, he told us uh, that when we pray, it goes through Jesus. And Jesus gets up to God, and God asks him a question. Do you know the individual? Jesus says, look at my hands, where the nail just went through. Look at my feet, where the nail went through. Look at the scars on my back, where the nail, where, where I got beat at. Yes, I know it. I died for it. So God answers it because we got a second chance by Jesus. So I need us to understand, family, that a perfect sacrifice was given to save an imperfect us. You know, and I don't know exactly who needed to hear this today, family, but I believe that this specific message is for those individuals who's about to experience unaccelerated acceleration. All right. AJ, what do you mean by that? Quantum leaps. So which is telling me that you are about to, that you are at a level where you are now, but God is about to send you something that's going to put you 10 steps ahead of where you are currently. So my question today, guys, is are you ready for what's coming? All right. Because granddad, ready or not? Here I come. Here I come. All right. All right. Family, ready or not? Here I come. All right. Ready or not? Here I come.